So I kept to what has become sort of a tradition for me. I don't watch NXT every week, and yet every couple of months where there's one of these takeover shows, I decide, you know what, I'm bored, or you know what, I want to see what's going on. I'll actually tune in and watch uh, the network special. Well, I guess now it's a Peacock TV special. So I sat there Sunday night and I watched NXT take over In Your House 2021 and yet again got another great reminder of why I don't bother with NXT, why I don't watch NXT, why I don't have a lot of interest in NXT and especially a reminder of just how far that NXT brand has fallen over the past couple of years. NXT as a whole has never really been a brand since it's kind of remake several years back that has truly appealed to me. It's just not my flavor of wrestling. It's just not my deal. I don't like some of the stuff that they do. I don't like the way that a lot of the talents work their matches. Although you start to say that's not really just an NXT thing anymore. And that is certainly true by any stretch of the imagination. At least you could say in the older days of NXT that you had, you know, at least some decent characters, some talents that were worth emotionally investing in, and sometimes you would have really good, compelling stories. And as I watched this pay-per-view, like, the lack of both of those were just incredibly striking to me. Like, you think about when you watch Raw and how often it's just, like, paint-by-numbers, bland-as-possible, get-by shit. That's what this show felt like. Now, admittedly, I'm sure I will be in the minority or somewhat in the minority when it comes to this viewpoint. Um, but the way I kind of look at it is, is I still try to have some level of expectations and standards when it comes to wrestling. And a lot of other folks either have changed their standards and have changed what appeals to them about wrestling and kind of have lost their way or they're newer fans that don't really have an appreciation or understanding um, life experience with when wrestling was really hot, um, or just fans have no standards anymore. I don't really know what it is. But I can't imagine looking at this show and thinking it was a great wrestling show. Now, to say that, I've certainly seen worst NXT, take worst NXT TakeOver shows. I found that this show annoyed me a little less, even though there wasn't a whole lot there in terms of compelling stories. There wasn't a whole lot there in terms of compelling characters. I found this show to be less annoying than usual, and I don't really know why. Uh, but maybe it was, you know, due to the opening tag match. It was a six-man tag. You know, MSK, which a lot of folks really, really like them, and to me, they just feel more like a dime a dozen tag team in the business today. That's just the reality. And Bronson Reed, um, them going against Legado del Fantasma, you know, and I'll say Santos Escobar certainly looks legit. Um, but this six man tag actually worked for me pretty well. Yeah, I actually enjoyed it. It didn't go too incredibly long, which was a good thing. They certainly played up Bronson Reed and kind of the size dynamic and the size differential, which, you know, that's that natural storytelling element that's always going to work in wrestling, and it certainly did here. thought the action was pretty crisp. Sure, you get some of the usual stuff you get in today's wrestling, but nothing that was too extreme or too obnoxious. Like, I actually felt like it was a little bit reserved for the type of match that it could have been. I actually, I can't believe I'm saying this, I actually found myself enjoying an NXT match. I thought this one was pretty good. You know, and it actually had some stakes to it. You know, it was winner take all. Uh, Bronson Reed's the North American champion, I think, right? And then um, MSK are the tag champs. So at least you had some type of reason for this match occurring, some type of purpose. And hey, six-man tag, that's not just a random six-man tag, but a six-man tag that actually has some type of stakes. All right, we could certainly do a whole hell of a lot worse than this. Uh, Zaya Lee defeats Mercedes Martinez, and I'm sorry, but this, to me, was not a good match. Thankfully, it was on the shorter side, so that was good. And, you know, as far as the thing of, like, whoever the hell that was that made the appearance post-match, like, you know, I'm looking at it, I really don't know. I don't keep up with the product, I don't pay attention, so... You know, I'm observing this as a much more casual type of fan. And, you know, it kind of looked cool at first. And then it felt like it was really dragged out and took too damn long to get to the freaking point. Um, when I look at either one of these ladies, like, do you really see either one of them making any type of big ways or any big splashes in the future? Um, let's say a Raw or a SmackDown. 
I personally don't. Like, it feels like this is the high watermark for them. And I certainly could be wrong. But, you know, watching this match, it was a little sloppy, a little choppy. Yeah, I'm, I'm good. Like, I'm good. Um, the ladder match for the vacant million dollar championship, or just the million dollar championship. Cameron Grimes versus L.A. Knight. Well, I don't understand why people like Cameron Grimes, and I think he's kind of gross and disgusting. I will say this, is that at least he has a gimmick. At least he has a character. And L.A. Knight certainly has personality, charisma, and a character. And at least they were fighting for something that makes sense for both of these guys. L.A. Knight, you know, wanting to get the prestige of having the million dollar belt and Cameron Grimes and his character, what it would mean to him to have the million dollar championship. Like, cool. In this ladder match, they went out there and they had a really good freaking match. I even thought the way that the million dollar championship was displayed above the ring in that case looked freaking cool. It looked a little different. I really liked that. This match I liked. And maybe maybe that's just a product of like it wasn't as flippy kicky as some of the other crap I see. I don't really know. Um, but yeah, like I enjoyed this. I thought the right guy won. The only thing I thought that uh, L.A. Knight, I thought Eli Drake was going to have a moment where he was going to have a Jack Swagger, a Jack Swagger, and take two minutes to unhook the briefcase. But thankfully, he got the case off in relatively short order. But hey, two out of the first three matches I thought were pretty, pretty damn good. Which for me to find a couple of NXT sh matches enjoyable is kind of a rare feat, admittedly. Uh, the NXT Women's Championship was Raquel Gonzalez versus Ember Moon. Um, I'm sure people will like this more than I did. You know, like I look at Raquel Gonzalez and I say, you know, this certainly looks like a bad bitch. And, you know, she can use her strength and her power. Ember Moon can do more spectacular high-flying type of stuff. You know, fans online at least seem to enjoy it. I don't know that the fans in person really seem to enjoy it. And let me, let me say this. I don't get why, after all this time, you know, that during the pandemic where fans weren't able to come to shows, you finally are able to start coming back to shows and you're sitting on your hands. Like, that happened throughout the night. Like, one thing that was really striking to me is I'm used to NXT shows where the fans are really engaged or really into it to the point where they annoy me because they're chanting, this is awesome, or you deserve this, and one more time, one more time, and all this crap. I'm like, they don't earn it, they don't deserve it, but you know what? They're at least emotionally invested and connected in the talents and in the show and in the product. Certainly wasn't the case on Sunday night. Yeah, that was kind of rough. It almost sounded like they were pumping in crowd noise at some point in time. I wouldn't be surprised if they did because that audience there absolutely sucked. And maybe... That's because this show kind of sucked. But I'm not going to be as harsh on this NXT TakeOver as I have been on some other recent ones because I did enjoy this one a little bit more. Uh, but Raquel Gonzalez wins. And then we get to the main event, the five-way for the NXT Championship. It's almost like Karrion Cross said, give me all your vanilla lames in one match and let me smash through all of them. Yeah, pretty much. Look, I'm sorry. Kyle O'Reilly, Kyle Smiley, whatever the fuck you want to call him, is lame as shit. Like, not even like a midget, just the epitome of vanilla, bland wrestler. He's like that generic 50 skill creator wrestler. That's all the hell he is. Whoopee, he can do spots. In today's wrestling business, who the fuck can't? You got Johnny Same Face, as I think Dallas Croyer, one of my followers, calls him. Dallas Lame Face, or Adam, uh, Johnny Lame Face. Like, okay. He's an NXT lifer at this point, my God. But again, I look at him and be like, this is supposed to be some of the best of your brand? I'm not impressed. And then we get to the fucking loser weight. I swear this asshole can't do anything. Except bend fucking fingers and shit and snap them. At some point in time, find something else. At some point in time, that shit is really stupid. And I can't imagine people pining for this guy like this. Like, maybe this is a part of the current wrestling business and its structure and the way it is doesn't do him the best bit of justice 
because you don't have a cruiserweight division that you can really actually have cruiserweights and it's significantly different than like your main heavyweight division. Like they're all the freaking same now, but yeah, I'm sorry. He fucking sucks. The hell is so great or special about him? At least for those that like Adam Cole. Yes, he's on the smaller side, blah, blah, blah. But at least he can pull some good promos out of his ass. At least he has some versatility in terms of being able to perform both as a babyface or a heel. To me, he's a somewhat talented hand. Limited, but talented hand nonetheless. So even though he's not my favorite, I get it. When I see people geeking out for Kyle O'Reilly and Johnny Gargano and fucking the loser weight, the same that they do Adam Cole, I don't freaking get it. I can at least see Adam Cole has some differentiating, discerning talent. These other three asshats do not. And then we get to carry and cross. Like some of you are going to say, well, he's big, so automatically you like him. But damn, at some point in time, I've got to see this dude deliver in a big match. Like, you know, personally, maybe it's just the point of this match felt really random and there wasn't a whole lot of story to it. And it was just stupid to see the significantly bigger guy doing that much selling to him. But I don't know if it's a fucking skirt looking gear that he had that looked kind of ridiculous, but... You know, it's one thing to look big and bad, but when it comes time, like, you got to be able to deliver big and bad, and he certainly did it, and admittedly, this match certainly didn't. You know, you got the typical chain of, you know, no selling flippy fuck shit like you always get, and nobody, you know, taking time to absorb what happens, nobody taking time to actually sell the consequences. It's just, we got to rush, and we got to get all our shit in in this half hour, and then the finish you get to Karrion Cross submitting Kyle O'Reilly and the crowd stays quiet. Not good. For some reason you wanted to do a fucking five way here and you got the reaction you deserve. Personally, I thought this match was hard to sit through, just mediocre, and the finish sucked. I thought there were other matches on the show that were better than this one, that's for damn sure. And what's really sad to me, I don't know if it's sad or just fitting, like the most memorable thing I think about this show is what William Regal said after the freaking show. Talking about it might be time for a change. Are we bringing Samoa Joe into Wrestle Karrion Cross? Are we bringing in Samoa Joe to be the NXT general manager? Like people, it seemed like because that was the ending thing and that was the hook, made it feel like more like an NXT episode than it actually did at NXT TakeOver pay-per-view. Like, it's not good when that's the thing that you're talking about is the kind of low-key, legendary general manager potentially uh, leaving that role. That's the thing that everybody was talking about. Triple H said last week that he thinks fans oftentimes ruin their own stuff. I'm going to tell you this. The fans didn't ruin NXT, Hunter. You and the WWE did. And I see no path forward where you're going to grow your audience or improve your brand because you just keep repeating the same mistakes with the same type of shit and the same type of people and it never gets better and it never changes.